What used to take hours in Adobe After Effects or even Comfy UI is now collapsed down to a single text prompt. Tools like Nano Banana, Sea Dream 4, Runaway Aleph, and so many more are introducing this new paradigm of instruction-based editing. It's a whole new way of creating. Instead of motion tracking something, building geometry, estimating the lighting in the scene, and all the other steps you had to take before for visual effects, you can just tell the AI model exactly what you want and it does the rest. It's quite literally like standing over the shoulder of a talented VFX artist and having them execute on your vision immediately. But these advances are collapsing that explicit multi-step pipeline into one implicit step. It's making professional grade scene reconstruction and visual effects editing more accessible to content creators. So let's break down the latest tools, what they do and why they're a big deal. All right, let's talk about the image models and then the video models. On the image side, you've got Google's Nano Banana, lightning fast instruction based edits with text and image references. ByteDance recently dropped Seed Dream 4.0. It's very similar to Nano Banana, but much higher resolution and even better prompt adherence. Kind of crazy. The unreleased model that you probably haven't heard of is GPT Image 1 High Fidelity. This is unreleased, but coming very soon as it is already available on LM Arena. From Black Forest Labs, you've got Flux Context, which again is all about instruction based editing. And of course, the model that started it all, GPT 4.0 Image Gen. On the open source side, you've got Quen Image Edit, which is absolutely amazing. And it's very close cousin on the video side, WAN and vase, which I'll get to a little bit later. Now, all these image editing models, what makes them different? What's the instruction-based aspect? On the video side, you've got an equally killer lineup. You've got Runway's Aleph and Luma's Modified Video. These are closest to what I'm talking about in terms of instruction-based editing. You provide in a video, describe what you want to change in it, and voila, you get an output. You've also got tools like Higgs Field that are making it easier to do things like insert props into video. Now, tools like Pika have been able to do this, but Higgs Field hits a higher quality threshold for prosumer creations. On the video side, I would also include large language models. Like Claude is amazing for motion graphics. You can use it to generate HTML, CSS, and JavaScript to create animations that you screen record and have explicit control over and a great example of instruction-based editing. If you want to just move the camera around, NVIDIA has an amazing model called Gen 3C. It's basically the Ken Burns effect on steroids. You take a still image and then you can animate the camera exactly how you want. And then as I mentioned earlier, on the open source side, you've got the cousin of WAN 2.0 called Vase, or all-in-one video creation and editing. If you're a comfy UI user, you gotta look into this tool. I mean, the capabilities are very easy to explain. You've got the ability to move anything, swap anything, or reference anything, expand anything, and animate anything. Essentially, all of the closed source tools have these features to various degrees, and you have it all in one with this particular release. I think a good way to think about this is like, uh, you can also re-render videos very easily, including content preservation, structure preservation, subject preservation, all the things that you might've otherwise used like multi-control network flows for, but optimized for video in this case. So everything is very temporally and structurally coherent. So what does all of this mean? This is extremely exciting because essentially you're collapsing down the complexity of a multi-step Photoshop, After Effects, Nuke, Cinema 4D workflow, down to a handful of steps. And again, if you know these tools, you are at even more of an advantage because A, you know exactly how to prompt these systems to get really good results because you know how to describe it. And you can blend the best of old and new techniques to get the job done. To give you a perfect example of taking all these instruction-based primitives together, check out this video a talented visual effects artist made, reskinning that iconic scene from Superbad where McLevin presents his fake ID for the first time. He swapped this out to look like the characters from The Phantom Menace, and it looks so good because this is an experienced artist combining Gen AI tools like Runway with things like Photoshop and Nuke for compositing. But this also has amazing takeaways for less savvy prosumer creators, right? Like the beauty of this stuff is the images serve as your starting seed point. But this is also amazing for the less initiated and aspiring creator, right? Like suddenly you have a really good way of creating all the keyframes, the start and end frames you need to throw into your video model of choice. If you made a generation and you want to swap out the face to have consistent characters, you could do that. You don't need to use a task specific model for face replacement or background segmentation and all these different tasks anymore. You could just do it with a handful of primitives that are far more general purpose. So you could take the image models we talked about and use it to make your start and end keyframes, then throw it into your video models of choice. 
you can take the output of that video, throw into some of these instruct-based videos to modify it further. And suddenly you're bypassing After Effects completely. These Higgs field examples of object insertion just show how amazing this is. Like think of how much effort it would be to go motion track this in Mocha, for example, and then painstakingly adjust the lighting. This is all one shot now. So the power here is quite immense. It means that we've got these generative black box models where you can provide a set of inputs and get some really cool shots or elements that you can composite together uh, depending on how you look at it and how sophisticated of a creator you are. Honestly, it even replaces 3D animation and motion graphics for you to a certain extent. Check out this amazing example of going into Nano Banana to make a bunch of motion graphic keyframes and then animating them with your video model of choice. Since you've got the start and end keyframe, you can just keep repeating it again and again, essentially doing extended length generations to a theoretically infinite duration. Now look, it is not quite ready for professional grade productions yet, right? Like, if you're professional grade production, you probably want some sort of a mezzanine codec. You're probably looking for high bit depth color. You're looking for a log color curve, all these types of things. It's not quite there yet, but for internet scale production, for making content on YouTube or other social media platforms, I think these tools very much have a place in your workflow today. Now, I suspect where this is going to go in the future is we're going to have these two bifurcated lanes of development. Some of the models will be common, but we'll have you know, far more accessible tools like Higgs Field and Runway on one end that cater to a broad swath of users, including some professionals. And then on the other side, we're going to see a lot more of these hybrid workflows emerge. As we're creating this video, Adobe actually listened to the feedback and is going to integrate Nano Banana directly into Photoshop. This is the first third party model that Adobe is putting in their crown jewels. Even on the After Effects side, you're going to see a bunch of cool new plugins. Now, back in my day, when I used to work at Google, we made this thing called Deep Light for AR Core. We went and recorded a bunch of these shiny balls, essentially, to collect a bunch of training data so a camera could take just the feed that it sees, which is this like vertical limited field of view image, and imagine what the light probe for the whole scene might look like. This is child's play today with machine learning. In many ways, you can bypass it all together with these really large models that have just seen enough of the content on the internet to be able to do this kind of lighting estimation implicitly. On the compositing end with tools like Nuke, you'll see even other amazing options. Now you can take things like depth estimation and already use it to figure out how to place volumetric lighting in a scene and have your scene and structure respond very, very believably. Some of these results are absolutely fantastic. And this is just using machine learning based depth estimation as a primitive. You're going to start seeing just like you have really powerful nodes inside a comfy UI. These are going to start coming into tools like Nuke and After Effects. So face swaps become a single instruction. Relighting a scene becomes a single image reference. Getting a motion track, coarse grain geometry and feature tracking points all becomes one single step. Once we start plugging in models like VGGT, directly inside of these compositing tools. One last prediction I'll make here is on this theme of industry standard tools playing with the new models, one really cool line of research to look at is perhaps exemplified by Blender Fusion. So this paper is very interesting. It basically says, screw trying to describe 3D edits through text and just use Blender. And the idea is very straightforward, right? Like instead of trying to cram 3D understanding into a diffusion model, you use depth estimation and segmentation to take these 2D images and project them into two and a half D meshes, edit them in actual 3D software, and then use a very fine tuned diffusion model to make the results photorealistic again. This is very much the approach that NVIDIA is taking with Cosmos and Omniverse, which we've discussed in previous videos. So this is very cool, right? Like if you're a less sophisticated creator and you just care about the end result and you wanna use natural language images and scribbles to describe what you want, you're gonna have a really great path for you. On the other hand, if you're a professional, and you want basically to turn videos into these editable scene graphs where every single thing is controllable, all the writing is on the wall, you're going to have that too. And personally, this has me very excited because I grew up learning visual effects. So there are many times I actually find it a little bit easier to go into something like After Effects and Maya and do it myself. I want to have the best of both worlds. But there are other times I'm making a shitposting meme for Twitter and I don't want to go through all of that effort. In those situations, I really like the consumer prosumer centric workflows. I think there's an ability for creators to take advantage of both of these lines of development that will continue to flourish. Where does this leave us? Instruction based video editing is clearly the start of something bigger. You're collapsing these complicated, explicit pipelines into text, image and video prompts with very, very simple instructions. On the other hand, thanks to the magic of machine learning, 
you can basically take a video and get back those explicit pipelines where everything is controllable. This is the magic of multimodal in and out models. So ultimately, where all of this is going is that some kid sitting in a basement is going to have access to the capabilities that James Cameron could only have dreamt of. Want to use that camera to record everything with your friends in real life? You could do that. Want to make it all inside your computer? You could do that too. With all this mundane drudgery, these multi-step workflows getting collapsed down into a handful of Lego pieces you can use in concert with each other, it really comes down to the vision in your head and how you turn your mind inside out. I call this tech ILM in a box. You get a visual effects studio in this black box, maybe even the offline holodeck. Now, if you want the real holodeck, I'll see you in my next video about world models over here.